want to take this opportunity to thank God for giving us a chance to just look through his word. And our topic today will, will be change my name, O oh Lord. Change my name, O oh Lord. Our key scripture will be Second Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. And as they work on it, I want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop, for our mom, for giving us this opportunity that we can stand on this altar and share in the word of the Lord. I count it a privilege. I count it an honor. Vanessa Sefiri. And we also want to bless God because we are alive in this season. We are the remnants of this season. And it's because God still has something that he desires of us to know, to learn, and to do. He still has an assignment for us. Hallelujah. Change my heart, uh, change my name, oh Lord. Change my name, oh Lord. We are looking at First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Names normally hold a very, very important key in our lives. And many times, depending on the cultures where we come from, we end up naming mostly our parents, and especially if you come from central region, from eastern region, we name mostly our parents. Why do we do that? Because we honor them. We honor them. That's the reason we name. Unless someone else would tell me something else, I know it's because we honor them. We respect them. We hold them in high regard. And so many times when our children have been named those names from the home states that have ever visited, you don't even want, if you've named your mother, you don't want to mention her name. You end up calling them Mami, Ama, Daddy. Because of the kind of respect you hold um, for your parents. Now, where I come from, we name dignitaries. <laughs> we name dignitaries like um, Obama. <laughs> yes. Why? Because we also hold those people in high regard, but we also have at the back of our minds that one day, one day, they might become who that person has been. So when you hear Obama, what we are in essence saying, this one might one day become a president somewhere. And so names are very, very important. After marriage, most women, I'm saying most because there are some who don't want to change their names, but most women change their names to signify a new beginning in their lives, to signify that they have opened a new chapter. Now they belong to somebody else. And that's why they change their names and from their maiden names so that they can acquire their husband's names. In biblical times, names were even more intentional because they often said something about somebody's character. And you find this a lot in the time, like for instance, if you read the book of Hosea, Hosea was instructed by God to marry a harlot. And when they got children, the children that they got were named to signify something that was going on in Israel. Like they had a daughter who was called Lo Ruhama. Ruhama means God full of mercy. But when you add the word law in the beginning, it means no mercy. And so most of the people who were named in the Bible, it had a meaning. Eli's daughter-in-law, after the husband died and she got into labor, 
and she gave birth to a child before she died. She called that child Ichabod, meaning what? The glory has departed. Why did she say that? Because the Israelites went into war at a time when they were not in good time, terms with God. And so they carried along the Ark of the Covenant. And still while at war, they expected the Ark of the Covenant to help them fight, but they ended up being beaten thoroughly. And so this woman realizes that she has lost her husband in the war. She has lost her father-in-law because of the shock. Therefore, the son who was born was called Ichabod. And many times I like sitting back and thinking, this child, as he was playing outside, and maybe someone wanted them to come into the house, they'd go like what? Ichabod. What did that mean? The glory has departed. Anytime maybe the aunties who raised her or whoever was raising her, anytime they were calling her out, they kept on kind of prophesying what was happening in the nation of Israel at that time time. And so names are very, very important. Names have power. And that's why in the olden days, biblically, God from time to time, you find him changing people's names. He gets to interact with Abraham. And then at that time when he is meeting with Abraham, Abraham's name is Abram, meaning the exalted father. But he looks at Abraham and he sees a bigger appointment that he has for him. He sees the kind of assignment that he has for Abraham. And he realizes it is not enough to be called an exalted father. Because I want to make you the father of nations, the father of multitudes. I am going to change your name. And from this day henceforth, in the book of Genesis chapter 17, from this day henceforth, I am going to call you Abraham, meaning the father of nations. And he gets into a covenant with him in the book of Genesis chapter 17 from verse 1 there about. And immediately after changing his name, when we get to the next chapters, then he blesses him with a son to kind of seal the covenant that that which I have called you will come to pass. And so this morning, our topic is change my name, O oh God. Change my name, O oh God. Still in the very introduction, names being very powerful. Even the names of God are very powerful. There's this uh, blind Bartimaeus. He is seated along the road. I want to believe he must, may, maybe if he was uh, in Kenya of those days, maybe there were people who used to escort him to the streets, to the highways, and leave him there to go begging and come for him in the evening. Because that's what I see people do in Nairobi. And so that very morning, blind Bartimaeus is seated in the highway at a place where Jesus was going to pass that day. And he starts hearing noise. And when he hears the noise, he gets to know that it's Jesus who is passing by. And he does not call him Jesus. He calls him son of David. Have mercy on me. He knew what he needed. And he knew it's only when he invokes the name of Jesus as son of David, meaning what? Mentioning his lineage as king. And you know, kings are able to set you free from your bondages. When the president stands during um, the Madaraka Day or Jamhuri Day, he has the power to say that the people who have been in prison be let free. Be set free. Why? Because he is king. His declaration is normally established. So blind Bartimaeus knows this truth. And when he is calling on Jesus, he calls him, he calls him son of David, have mercy on me. Invoking his name from the lineage of kingship so that he can be set free. And he was set free. Hallelujah. So many times, the names we have are prophetic. 
And when I'm talking about the names we have, it might not be your name as Millicent, Jane, John. That is not what I'm talking about today. So that by tomorrow we go to the Attorney General's office to change our names. I am not talking about that. But what I'm talking about is the names by which people have been referring to you. That when they see you coming, they associate you with poverty. When they see you coming, they associate you with sicknesses. When they see you coming, they associate you with something that in most cases is negative. Years, years ago when I was young, there was a funny song that used to sing. That who are wakisema fungeni mlango ana? Anakuja. Those of my generation remember that thing. <laughs> Fungeni mlango anakuja. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu alikuwa anapenda kwenda kwa jirani. Huyu anakula, anenda huku, anakula, anenda kule kungina, anakula. Kwa hivu majirani, they knew him, uh, they knew her and they could see her at a distance. Na wanaambia watoto, fungeni mlango anakuja. And maybe those are some of the things that we have been going through. When people see your call, Instead of picking your call, all they are saying, Sasa huyu wameanza kunisumbua, ni pesa tu anataka. Maybe it's not even money that you need, but because of the challenges that you've been having in the past, fungeni milango ana? Anakuja. And today, oh that the Lord would change our names. Bona sifiwe. Oh that the Lord would change our names. A few years ago, when my daughter was unwell, would get to the hospital and she had been given a name. The medics here will know that name. She had been given a name because of the condition that she was suffering from. She had a condition of sickle cell. And you know, sickle cell makes people very weak. And in most cases, like when we were, um, we, were, we kept going to the clinic back and forth, we were told she will not cross nine years. Then again, we were told she will not cross 18 years. Right now, my daughter will be turning 21 this year. But there was a name. Anytime we'd go to Get Roots, we'd go to Aga Khan, we'd go to Kenyatta, there was a name that they kept referring to her. And every time they referred to her like that, I'd look straight at the doctor's face and tell her, that's not her name. Her name is Joy Nema. They were calling her a sickler. A sickler. This is that sickling girl. Huh? And most of the children who normally suffer from that condition are called sicklers. But I kept telling the pediatrician, I kept telling the surgeon who was handling her, anytime they'd call her a sickler, when they're going to draw the cards from the doctors, whatever, when you go to see a doctor, because we had an appointment after every two weeks, they would always say, it's that girl who is a sickler who has been brought by the mother. And I'd look straight in their eyes and tell them, no, She's not a sickler. She is joy. Because I know the power that is found in a name. There are those of us who have been suffering from sicknesses. Maybe it's diabetes and people have baptized you. This is that diabetic woman. That diabetic man. This is that hypertensive woman. Oh, that the Lord would change our names. One has a few. I'd like us to read the book of Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you'd bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. This was a man. The Bible starts by saying that he was honorable, among his men. He was respectable, but there was a problem. 
he was called pain because the name Jabez meant pain. This woman, the mother of Jabez, must have gone through maybe excessive labor or maybe there was a challenge in the marriage. We are not told the, what, the kind of pain that she went through, but we are told that she bore the child in pain. And as a result, as soon as the bundle of joy was brought to her, like babies are normally brought to us, she said, this baby will be called pain because I bore him in pain. And so every time when Jabez was playing outside and mama had cooked food, mama would go like, pain, please come and eat. Pain, please dress up for school. You know, every time that that name would be called, it would invoke pain in Jabez's life. Every time it would invoke pain. Just like every time, maybe that name that you've been called has been invoking pain in your life. And so he knew he needed to do something. He knew that there was a God in heaven who would be able to change his circumstances. And throughout scripture, this is the one man who asked God, won't you change my name? For Abraham... God decided to change his name because of his assignment. For Sarah, God decided to change her name because of her assignment. For Jacob, after he had wrestled with God the whole night, having transported his family across the Jabbok, he came back and he fought with God. He wrestled with God because he was a man who knew no defeat. He was a man who never would give up on anything. He fought with God the whole night. And ultimately... When he got the mark of God, when God touched his hip and it got disjointed and now he was limping, he had the mark of God. God comes to him and is asking him, what is your name? And for the first time when he says Jacob, he realizes what he has just said. He realizes he has introduced himself to God as a con man. He realizes he, he's just introduced himself to God as a trickster. As a person who had a false identity, remember the time when he went to his father and the father was touching him and then he said, I am Esau. He had a false identity. And so he is realizing for the first time what this name really means. A supplanter, a con man, a trickster. He had been wearing a mask all along. And some of us seated here, maybe we have been walking and wearing masks all along. Even when we come into the presence of God, like this Sunday morning, we have come, but we have a mask deep inside of us. There is something that has been disturbing us, that has caused us not to move in front, but we cannot introduce ourselves to our friends as such. So Jacob introduces himself and God says, from today henceforth, you're not Jacob. You'll be called Israel. But for this man, Jabez, Jabez went to God himself. And when he went to God himself, he is asking God for certain things that he knows are going to change his life. He is tired of going through pain. And as he went through pain, he caused pain. Just like most people who have been wounded, their hearts are so wounded, and every place that they go, they cause pain. Unknowingly, not because they want. Unknowingly. Any place that they are passing through, they leave a trail of blood, a trail of tears. Because of who they are. So Jabez went before the Lord and he's like, oh God, that you would bless me indeed. That was the first thing he asked for. I'm going to give us four things that Jabez asked for. The first one he asked for, oh God, that you would bless me indeed. Realize he, don't, he doesn't say, oh God, that you'd bless me. Mm -mm. But he's saying, bless me. Indeed. Why indeed? 
The word indeed means truly, undeniably. In other words, as I've been walking around my community, people have known me to be a man who is causing pain. People have been known my name, have been knowing my name as pain. But oh God, today, won't you bless me undeniably that as my people in the community will be looking at me, they will know that I'm truly blessed. I won't have to go telling them what you have done, God. But as they look at me, as I am walking, as I'm interacting with them, they will know that I am truly blessed. And so he is asking of God. Oh God, that you'd bless me indeed. He is asking God for extravagant blessing. That you'd bless me indeed. He is asking God, do not withhold any blessing that is meant for me because of my name. Change my name today and bless me indeed. Release everything that was meant to be mine when you created me. Bless me indeed. And there are those of us here who this morning, maybe that's your cry. Oh God, that you'd bless me indeed and change my name. I am tired of being identified with the name that I've been identified with. That simply because I tripped, I messed, I got a baby out of wedlock, I am called single mother. And it's single mother with a stigmatization attached to it. Oh God, that you'd bless me indeed. Cause it to be undeniable. And so Jabez asked for that. The second thing Jabez asked for is, Oh Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. What is territory? Territory is area of influence. Hallelujah. So Jabez is asking, he is saying, Lord, I have just been operating with this, within this perimeter. But my father, as you bless me indeed, enlarge my area of influence. That when I'll be standing to talk, people can at least listen to me because of the blessing that you'll have put inside my life. You know, there are times when you can have wisdom, but based on the way you are looking, people will choose whether to listen or not to listen. Based on the way you are looking or the way you are referred to, people will choose to take that wisdom or not to take it. Pastor Beatrice normally likes telling us that the times when they used to go to the hospital ministry, one time they'd go and then just when they're preaching, people would uh, take their blankets and cover themselves. Excuse me. And then... Wanafungua hiyo blanketi kidogo so that they can look at you from your legs to your head. Meaning they are checking the kind of shoes you are wearing. They are checking the kind of dress you are wearing. They are looking right at your hair to determine whether they will take this Jesus you are speaking about or not. So people will take your message depending on your presentation. And so Jabez knew this thing and he's saying, Lord, even as you bless me indeed, the second thing I'm asking of you is that you would enlarge my area of influence. Enlarge my territory. I want to be a man of influence. And that's what God is calling each and every one of us to become, a man of influence. So he's asking, enlarge my territory. The third thing Jabez is saying, oh, that your hand would be with me. Hallelujah. And what more does a person need rather than the hand of God? Oh, that your hand would be with me. What was Jabez asking? The hand of God. When the hand of God is with me, when the hand of God is with you, it means several things. Number one, the hand of God is mighty. I'd like us to read Joshua chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. The hand of God is mighty. Joshua 4, 23 to 24. 
So Jabez is asking God, let the hand, your hand that is mighty be with me. And this is what it says. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to, to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over. That all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord forever. Bonasifiwe. The hand that was able to part the Red Sea. Now, what Jabez knew is that when the hand of God is with him, then whatever circumstances that will present themselves before him, God is able to deal with them, just like God was able to deal with the Red Sea. And the hand of God being in our lives will also mean, number two, that he will fight against our enemies because the hand of God being with us is dangerous against the enemy. Bonus if he will. That you can find in Exodus chapter 9, verse 3 to 4. Exodus chapter 9, verse 3 to 4. So, Jabez knew he not only needed the hand of God that is mighty, but he needs the hand of God that will be dangerous to his enemies. Exodus 9, 3 to 4. Behold, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle in the field on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the oxen, and on the sheep, a very severe pestilence. This was a warning to the Egyptians. The hand of God was going to be on their livestock, a very severe pestilence, the hand of the Lord. When the hand of the Lord is with you, it means your enemies stand no chance against you. It means the devil can do nothing concerning your life, however much he tries to scheme against your life. The hand of God, because the hand of God is dangerous to the enemies. Yesterday we were looking at the book of uh, Joshua chapter 10 verse 11. Uh, we don't have to, uh, to, 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 to screen that. Joshua chapter 10 verse 11. We we're just looking at it with my children. And it was looking very, very interesting that there was a time the Israelites were at war and God decided his hand was going to be up upon them. God decided he was going to, uh, to start throwing large stones at the enemy. So God decided to use stones to fight the enemies of the Israelites. And you know my son said what? Wajaka had a place to learn from. <laughs> Those who know, know. Especially in the football matches. What we normally do to Kishindwa, tunakuwaga na mawe, ata kukiwa na kabro, mawe utokeaga tu mahali. Bonus if you. <laughs> yes, the hand of God is dangerous against the enemy. The hand of the Lord empowers his people. We find that in the book of First Kings chapter 18 verse 46. The hand of God empowers his people. The hand of God in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46 is the one that gave Elijah so much strength, so much power until he was able to guard his loins and start running ahead of Ahab who was on a chariot. The Bible says, then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is able to empower you. The hand of the Lord from the same scripture that we have seen is able to give you divine speed. There are times when you have delayed, you know, what we normally call the spirit of delay. God would have wanted you to be somewhere, but something has been in between here that has been causing a delay in your life. All that we need is the hand of God upon our lives, and we will get divine speed as it was in the, in, in the life of Elijah. When the rain started, he guarded his loins and started running, and he ran at a divine speed that he was able to bypass a chariot and arrived at Jezreel ahead of Ahab. And I was telling God, oh God, that your hand would be upon my life because I need this divine speed. I need divine speed as I minister. I need divine speed as I parent. I need divine speed as I do my businesses. Divine speed. 
It only comes with the hand of the Lord. And then number four. Number four. Of something else that Jabez is asking for. Keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And the Bible says, and God granted his request. God granted his request. In other words, Jabez had gone to the presence of the Lord to bargain for a new name. He had gone into the presence of the Lord to bargain for new circumstances. He had gone to the presence of the Lord to trade in his sorrows for the joys that God was willing to give. And we have been doing 24 hours prayer network. I want to pray that each one of us has been connecting. We have been doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting. We are ending on Wednesday this coming week. If you had not joined my prayer is that you would join and that you would join to bargain for your life so that the pain can be taken away. That you would say within this remaining few days, oh God that you would bless me indeed. Within these few days, oh God that you would change my name. And names don't just change. Things don't just happen. There has to be something that you will have done in the spiritual realm for you to get to the place where you want to be. One has a few. I am tired of being jobless. This is the season to plug into the power source and tell God, I have come to you like Jabez did. Oh, that you'd bless me indeed. Give me a job. Oh, God, that you'd bless me indeed. And our bishop has always uh, given us an example of a lady who did not have papers. But because of her being in the presence of God, receiving the blessings of the house and receiving the blessings of God, she got a very good job for herself. Bonus, if you will. Some of us are sitting back here and they're saying, you know, I do not have a PhD. I do not have a degree. The hand of God is not dependent on the degree you have. It is not dependent on the people you know. Jabez knew nobody. All he knew was that he needed his name changed by the Lord God. And as we are seated here this morning, my prayer is that you would say, enough is enough of the names by which I have been referred. Oh God, that you would bless me. Oh God, that you would change my name. Oh God, that your hand would be with me. We have that opportunity to invoke the names of God so that he can change our names. On Wednesday, we were learning that we need to look at God in different dimensions. In different dimensions. And even this morning, you can look at God in different dimensions and you can be able to say, God, I am looking at you as a blesser. And therefore, oh God, by the name which you are called a blesser, bless me. I am looking unto you as a healer. And so as I am coming to you, I am coming to Jehovah Rapha. And I'm calling you as Rapha, my king. Oh, that you'd change my conditions and my circumstances. Some of us have been told by the doctor that you will keep managing this sickness with, with medicine throughout your lives. Let me tell you something. You don't have to. God can come into your life and he can change your circumstances in the name of the Lord. When we left Gertrude, and I'm winding up, on the 8th of November, the year 2000, we were told there are certain conditions we will keep managing with medication. For a sickler, as they were calling it, they needed a particular antibiotic throughout their lives. They needed a particular supplement. They call it folic acid throughout their lives. And so when I came home, I carried a chemist to my house. Drugs upon drugs. It was medication upon medication. There was actually a section in my cupboard where it was mainly for drugs. And there were drugs for one person, my daughter. And maybe that is what is happening with some of us here. 
we have medication because the doctor said, you have to manage this condition. There is nothing that you can do about it. Oh God, that you'd heal me and heal me indeed. I'd like us to just rise on our feet. And like Jabez, I don't know what you have been called. You know what you have ever been called. As I grew up, I was called asthmatic. <laughs> That's what they called me. It would get to this month that we are in, and I'd not leave the house. I'd always sleep with a flask of hot water next to me. Yeah, because I'd be blocked anytime. Asthmatic. But today I stand in this place. Being able to come to work even in the month of July. Because there is a God in heaven who answers prayer. There's a God in heaven who hears our prayer. My daughter is turning 21. Because there's a God in heaven who hears prayer. When she went through a surgery, her right ear was totally damaged. So she is totally deaf on one ear. And she had to delay her speech. Even by the time she was coming from Cornerstone Class 8, she could not construct a sentence that would make so much sense to most people. Teachers found it hard to handle her. But right now, as we are talking, Joy is do doing journalism. The other day, the other day, she brought us a video where she had gone to do her practicals at GBS and she was anchoring news. And I sat there and my tears rolled because I wondered this is the very girl who was said would never talk, would never walk. But now she's able to speak fluently in fluent English, anchoring news. Yupo mungu binguni Asikia e maomi yetu Yupo mungu binguni Ajibu ye maomi yetu Tunapomba Asikia anajibu Tunapomba asikia maombi yetu Tunapomba asikia anajibu Tunapomba asikia maombi could just lift your voice and tell him what you want your name changed to. Oh, he is bigger than the doctor's report. He is bigger than your community's reports. So you can call him this morning. You can call him and ask him, Father, Reveal yourself to me by the names that you are called. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah Nisi. Lord, won't you come into our lives and change our names this morning? And Lord, call us by what you originally had intended us to be called, O oh God. Thank you for each and every one of us, our Father. Oh, King in glory, change our names. Change our names, God. Change our names, oh Jesus. You, God, who answers by fire. Change our names, oh God. Change our names. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We come to you like Jabez of old did. And Lord, this one thing we are asking is that you'd bless us indeed. We are asking, oh God Almighty, that you'd enlarge our territories. 
We are asking that your hand would be with each and every one of us, our Father. And we are asking that, Lord, you'd remove pain from our lives, that you'd remove evil, our God, and help us not to cause pain to anyone, our Father. Receive every praise, oh God, and receive every honor. Maybe you're here and you've never even given your life to Christ. You can just lift your hands as we pray together so that you can have a relationship with this God who is able to change names. Thank you so much, my sister. Someone else who'd like to give their lives to Christ, you can join my sister. Because how can he change your name if you're not in relationship with him? My sister, you'll just repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you and I release my life to you. I acknowledge that you are God and only you can transform my life. And so today, I give you leeway to be my Lord and Savior. From today henceforth, I surrender my life to you, that I'll be yours and that you'd change my name in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and for loving me and for changing me in Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you for our sister today. We thank you, Lord, that as even she gets admitted to the kingdom today, that Jehovah God, you're changing everything that is surrounding her. And Lord, you're going to sustain her salvation. You'll hold your hand by your spirit and walk through this journey with her. Because we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.